Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek Whitehead. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent. that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show we clap just as the airplane is going over like, can you can you hear the airplane in these uh I don't know. I could not hear the kids screaming last. Oh, really? No. I can never hear the kids screaming. I mean, I do for two <laughs> seconds, and then I fucking zone them out. I'm just kidding. They, they, they get after it sometimes. They, yep. they really get after it. Um, hi. Welcome to Savage Saturdays, episode 32. No, 33. 33? Are you sure? Pretty sure. Okay. Well, is it? No. I, oh, well, hold on. I, I do have to confirm this, because this is um, this is our last uh, shindig here. This is it, man. Hold on, seven, seven, this oh, this is thirty three. Thirty three. Thirty three. That's the first time you were right. I, I think. know. It's you've only- never known what fucking episode this not, is. Not once. But you, uh, yeah. Welcome back, Savage Saturdays. I'm episode thirty three. Derek White. Joining me is Owen Lowerman for the last time. For the last time. For the last time. Um, Owen and I are parting ways. You leave. Actually, I. I um, leave you, right after this. After this episode comes out. Yeah, and um, I'm leaving on Thursday. So. What? Yeah, I, I'm flying to the, I'm flying to Springfield, Missouri for a competition. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's End it. of an era. I know. We've uh, working together just a little over a year, I think. Right? Maybe March uh, 2019 like year or so. And a half, yeah. 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 Year and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Started from a drinking bros business post. That's right. That's right. While well, I was taking a poop at the While gym. Taking a poop. Yep. Taking a poop at the gym. Um, and you are. You're moving on to Bernie, Texas. Bernie, Texas. Yep. I got family down there. Yeah. Yeah, your dad lives there. My dad lives there. My grandma's like 93, I think. So she And she's still doing great. So it'll be cool to have my kids with their great-grandma. Good Lord. A lot of people don't get that. I don't have, I I don't had have, great, any, I don't have any grandparents left. I had great-grandparents for a little bit until I was, I think, seven. I did, too. Well, I had a Grandma Olmshank. Oh, wow. She lived and died on the farm. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grandma Olmshank, yeah. No, we have a... Um, yeah, most of my, I mean, my grandparents have been gone for a long time. Yeah. Shit, my dad's been gone for five years now. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's actually cool. Bernie, Texas, all the Black Rifle guys are there. Yep. And then the Drinking Bros guys are right in Austin now. Yeah, they're like an hour so, and a half away, I think. Yeah. It's yeah, good, so that'll be cool. Good area to be around. And actually, Stacy and I, we went to, we visited the guys last year, about this time last year, actually, in Bernie, yep. Texas there. Nice little town. It's cool. Nice little town. It's like just yeah. far enough away from San Antonio, so that way it's uh, you're out of the city, but you still got space. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what we don't have here in Vegas is space. Yeah, the kids, my kids are into dirt bikes, and so yeah, and so actually, this is a uh, you know uh, after this episode, I'm gonna I'm gonna be taking like a three to four month break because yeah. we're moving as well. Yep, and uh, I'm gonna wait to pick up the podcast. Like I will return. I'm going to take like a three or four month break. And then I've already talked to Ross and um, our family is moving to uh, the St. Louis area. We're moving to the St. Louis area, which nice. is, which is weird. Cause like, I never thought I'd live in Missouri. Right. But I think we're going to, uh, you know, buy a house there. And actually the plan is to stay there, I think. But um, we're moving up there. We were going to move to Austin, Texas. Yeah. We were, um, you were talking about, we were about 90% sure we were going to move to Austin, Texas, but, um, what was it like a month or so ago mm-hmm. when we went to St. Louis? Um, when First Form, you know, the supplement sponsor that's or the supplement company that sponsored me for like the last five years, yeah, they built a new HQ. And it's huge. It's massive. It's amazing. And it's it's amazing. And, yeah. it, and and what's cool about it? I mean, there's a lot of things cool about it, but they they built it with the idea of, of they want people like me to come and work there and work out there right. and do all my shit there. Right. And they like gave me a locker and their gym is amazing. And Stacy and I went up there and we walked around and we just, we, we said, we're like, man, there's so much opportunity here. Yeah. 
we'd be stupid to pass it up. Like that's, we would be, we would be, you know, really passing up willingly. Right. Just a great opportunity. And, um, I'm excited to get up there, man, because like also like, so as you know, they got the, the big ass gym Mm -hmm. and then they're, I think they're, um, I think they might be building a couple more gyms just to have like different scenery and things like that. But then also like all those HQ guys, like one thing I, one thing I miss here or one thing I don't have here is, is like-minded friends. Right. You know, I know you have me. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But, and like, that's great, dude. Like what, like work, but like this, what we do is like kind of like my work life, you know, but like in my passion, like working out, I train by myself and I'm just, I just don't have anybody who likes to get after it all day, every day at the same level. Yeah. And then there's, there's so many people that work at first form HQ and that's what they do. And I'll, and, and, um, you know, for, for, uh, I mean, even, I would say like the last 10 years I've had various training partners. I've been training full time alone for maybe the last year and a half or so. Um, and it's not because I ditched my partners or something like that. It's just, I've always, I've never had partners who were like, let's fucking go. Right. You know, they're just, they're kind of like box checkers type right. thing. And I, and I like, I like training with people cause I like, I like talking during my workouts and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I, one of my best training partners over the years was, was my friend Billy. Um, and we were in the army together and then we were roommates several times okay. throughout our adult life and stuff. But he's actually, he's been, he's from California and he moved back like four years ago. And he's uh he's fighting those fires. Yeah, oh, he's fighting those fires. He's a forest fire guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Dang, he's busy. Yeah, he's 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 real busy, and and that's a that's a tough gig, man. And he's we're getting old. That's I a know. fucking hard ass job. I'm I'd, like, dude, how are you doing that? I'd put that up there with the infantry. <laughs> yeah, like that's hiking just, up and down yeah, mountains. Mm-hmm. You got all that gear on you. You're surrounded by Digging, danger. Cutting trees. Yeah, just yeah. breathing in that smoke. Jesus. And I in and but our town in Las Vegas has been covered by smoke because of those fires and yeah. I and I shoot I'm a dick I shoot a message be like you motherfuckers working or not can you hurry up what the up, fuck please? are you doing man like I can't <laughs> breathe here you know but so I'm excited about that man and I so I'm gonna be um I imagine I'll be at First Form HQ it'll be it, I'll people will think I'm a full time employee right because I'll do both my training sessions there and then I'll probably stick around and do work things there. I think yeah. it'll be, you know, cause they have like offices for me to yep. use or for people like me to use. It's right. not my office, but they built a place for me I to know. work. I'm like, what the fuck? You gotta be next to it. Yeah. You gotta be there. <laughs> yeah. And, um, man, that's, uh, I, I, I'm excited about that. Um, what are your plans for, I'm, for Bernie there? Bernie? I don't know. So we're going to, we're going to get down there and kind of, kind of decompress from the city yeah. For a little bit, but big plans. I'm I'm gonna start focusing a lot on a uh, uh, commercial video, like doing doing stuff for products and whatnot. I bought a whole bunch of lights to to start doing more of that. The other project I've been working on is um, kind of been on the back burner. I've got the 10 year anniversary of a lieutenant of mine who was KIA over in Afghanistan coming up, and he he had a son that was born right before we left, and so I have had this idea for a video project called the I Knew Your Dad Project where I know I have a couple of videos or I mean, I have a couple uh, stories about Lieutenant Fryson that I would love to share with Chris one day. And um, I know the other guys in third platoon have the same thing. And so my idea was to kind of collect all those videos and put them together for his son and then present that to him before the 10 year anniversary. And so, um, yeah. So working on that. When is when is the ten year anniversary coming? And just to be clear, K, just if somebody doesn't know, KIA means killed in action. So yep. this is and uh, the project is called "I Knew Your Dad When." That's what it's called. It's called "I Knew Your Dad Project." The, uh, okay, yeah, yep. yeah. I actually I remember you. This is something you when we first met. Yeah. A year and a half ago, this was something you were trying to get off the ground, and you were. I remember you were like you had a meeting with someone at Caesars. Yeah, Caesars to, 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 looking for funding or something yeah. like that. And it's a, it's a it's a cool it's a cool project. It's a great project. It needs to be tied with like some sort of charity or something like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, I think I it, think it'll involve evolve yeah. to that. The yeah. 
COVID kind of fucked up my plans for how I was going to do COVID it. COVID fucked up everybody's fucking <laughs> right? plan. You know, that's, yeah, yeah. dude, that's, uh, except mine. I, you know, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I was, I was fortunate to get shot young and early and have my life plans flipped upside down and go through that. This yeah. year has been a breeze because I'm just like, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, whatever. I don't give a shit. It's like, as long as I'm not in a hospital bed or incarcerated, yeah. or really, if, as long as I'm not incarcerated, I'm it's, good to go. It's about as bad like, as it could get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? If I'm not, if I'm not in jail, I'm good to go. Um, but no, I, 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 I think that's a great I'm excited project for it. or there's so many, it's something that hasn't been done yet. And if you're listening, please don't steal Owen's <laughs> idea here. No, know? reach out to me on Instagram. If you have, if you have a project like that, that you're interested in trying to put together, I'm at O Lowerman on, uh, on Instagram, but I'm doing a, I opened up an Etsy store to sell some art to kind of help finance this project. That's right. What I'm doing is. Um, because of how COVID changed, I was going to be driving around and getting interviews with, with all these guys who I was in Afghanistan with. And so what I've, what I've done now is I've packaged together, um, a, a kit that, um, cost a bit of money, but I'm sending that like out. Like the Canadian, like, exactly. the, like those Canadian, is that? They gave yeah. me the idea <laughs> yeah. of how to do it. Just, yeah. So I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to send mics and cameras and, and whatnot out to, out to all the guys who I was, um, in Afghanistan with and collect those stories that way. And then. To make it more interesting, I think I'm going to hire an animator to kind of animate some of the stories like and cartoon yeah, stuff or yeah. something. Yeah. Make it a little bit more visually interesting than just a couple talking heads about, yeah. you know, something. Yeah. Or just pictures. Yep. Yeah. Just, or any like B roll video or something totally. like that could do. Yep. I, I think a cartoon might kind of. So I've Play seen a it lightly. Black Rifle did a really good job with the who we are. Um, I'm not trying to completely rip off what they've done, but uh, Omar Crispy mm-hmm. Eleven B. Yeah, I saw his one time, and they they used some neat animation to kind of talk about when he got blown up. Oh, really? I was like, wow, that's a great way for and when it you wasn't don't like have cartoony people. or childish. No, no, no. Or no. It was, still it was super oh, neat. cool. Yeah, yep, that's cool. So, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I got uh, a website set up to the Itsy link. It's iknewyourdad.com. And then uh, I got a link on my Instagram, again, at O Lowerman. To O-L-A-U-E-R-M-A-N. That's it. O Lowerman. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some time to focus on that and hopefully get that produced and, uh, and edited and done before May of next year. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just this one, the one story. And yeah, then you'd just, like to do more stories. I'd like to. It, like this is, that takes a lot. Yeah. Like, this is you a could proof do this one for, for like, yeah, the, yeah, it's a great concept, but there's a lot of great concepts. It's like getting it exactly. going is, is tough, yep. you know? And, and like the, you know, um, sad thing about, um, the internet is you quite often, do something funny. Yep. Make a dick joke. Hundred thousand likes. <laughs> Put your fucking blood, and sweat, soul and soul into, into a project. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, like your your six family members that follow you on the internet <laughs> like your shit. And you're just yeah. like, God damn it. Yeah. Yep. No, it's yep. a cool project. Um yeah. That'd that'd be um Yeah, if I can work out the bugs and the kinks of how how the first one turns out and then how how I could improve upon it, then mm-hmm. this would be a cool uh, thing to do for other just you know, learn gold star families. Uh, you just got to learn how to how it would make money for someone somewhere, right? You know, that's yep. the that's the only thing. But then, so like, really, you're gonna be so you're moving to Bernie. You're gonna be starting at zero. Yep. You know, but that's fine. And I love and, it. Yeah, you know, it's like I love it. You just start over again. That's you know, it. and yeah, that's what it takes. I, I do that from time to time. Or yeah, like, I do you too. know, like I go from fitness to maybe music, to art, or, you know, like, and sometimes it's like, let's just burn it all down. <laughs> just, let's go be let's farmers. Just, let's just burn it all down. I just, <laughs> you know, like, write a book. I think I'm going to I'm gonna spend some time. So, you know, I have, like, a nice little three-month break, kind of. Yep. I have a competition this weekend, flying to Springfield, Missouri. I'm doing the Heart of America competition at what used to be CrossFit Springfield, but is now called Proximal Strength. Okay. Something along those lines. Yeah. Um, it's a nice three-day competition doing it with some first form people. Um, and then I have just nothing on this schedule. You know, nice. like I'll be training and stuff, like always working out. Right. But um, not don't have to do the podcast. Don't have to do... I think I'm going to take some time and finally write a book. You've man. been talking just, about that for a while. Well, it's it, you know what? It's like, it's something I, I've always 
wanted to write a book just, mm-hmm. just for like writing a book sake. If for nothing else, it's like, so my kids or my grandkids or my great grandkids can know who I yeah. am or something or like something like that. Or, you know, it like <laughs> writing. A, so I would write like, to, uh, like an autobiography, right? which is tricky for me because I'm always concerned, like in and of itself, that's an egotistical move. Yeah. That's saying like, I'm important enough to write a book and teach you something. <laughs> and it's a fucking, Listen. it's, you know, it's like, yeah. I know something and you don't, but like, but it was actually, you know, listening to the Jocko podcasts right. and like the stories I hear on there. It's like, and I, I listen to it and I'm like, man, this is like really inspiring me. And it's like, it's hitting me in the feelings. And, uh, and then it was especially Dan Crenshaw's book, Fortitude. Oh, okay. You know, reading that, I was like. I have one of these stories. Yeah. Like I, I have one right. of these it, and it is what it is. And I don't, I don't know, you know? And I was just like, I want to do that. It's something I want to do. But, um, you know, I've, I've wanted to write a book for a long time, but I, I waited. I'm glad I didn't write a book when I was in my twenties. Oh yeah. I could have. Right. You know? But your perspective. But then you just, been... I would have read it. I'm like, God damn it. You fucking idiot. Yep. Like, you think you know so much <laughs> and you just don't know shit. Motherfucker. You know? Oh God. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. You could write about the exact same thing, but it'd be a just completely my, different yeah. book because your perspective. And, and it was changed. just, it was so funny. And I was listening to a, an old Jocko podcast the other day and it was, um, Andy Stump. Have you heard that name? Uh, Andy Stump. He's, he's, yeah. I've heard his name. Around. He goes on like Joe Rogan and things like that. Oh, I have heard his name. So yeah, it, yeah. like the thing, like the dude, like, I don't know. I'm so like in my own world. It's not that I don't, like or care other people. And I mean, I only found Jocko what three months ago, right? Like legit. I didn't have a fucking clue who he was, you know? (laughs) Um, I'm just like in the zone here, you know, or in my own little, I'm just busy on my shit, you know? But, um, you know, I'm kind of like getting into these other stories and stuff and I really like it, but, um, it was funny. I was listening to this. Uh, so Andy Stump, he was a Navy SEAL and he got shot overseas and he got like shot in the hip or something. Oh fuck. And he was talking about when he was at the hospital his ankle hurt like a motherfucker. Okay. Nothing happened to his ankle. Right. But his ankle hurt like a motherfucker. And I was laughing and I have pictures because so I got shot in the knee. Yep. And one of my most painful areas on my body was my ankle. Legit nothing happened yeah. to my ankle, but I would just like complain about it. We even like wrapped it with ace bandage, yeah. even though there was nothing wrong with it. But it's like when your nerves get damaged, it's, it's displaced nerves. or what, whatever. Um, yeah, I think the word is like displaced pain. Yeah, like it radiates from another area. Yeah, and it, and so like listening to these stories, I'm just like, man, you know, like I don't. If if I just um, wrote a book but didn't um, really try too hard to teach somebody a lesson or something, right? Just maybe like tell what happened. What you know, what I've got, what I, what my life has been the yeah, last your experience, sixteen, seventeen years. Yeah, you know, it's just something I want to do, and uh, I also want to do it because. You know, I just, you get sort of tired of talking on the internet all the time. Right. Stuff like, like, so I, we, we, we do business on the internet, you know, but a book is like a real world thing. It's you're a an, thing. You're it's an a, author. Right. Yeah. But you're you know, like whether you're like a, a you know, <laughs> it, it technically, you're <laughs> technically, fucking author. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, technically I'm a lot of things that I'm <laughs> fucking not, you know, like, but technically, you know, technically I'm an artist, a musician, all that, you know, but, right. um, but you know, um, yeah. So that's, uh. I think now is a good time to try to do that. Yeah. You know, you're leaving. Everything's actually going to be, it's going to be weird. I, I, I didn't mention, so we're selling our house here. Right. <laughs> we're going to be living with my mom for like three and a half months <laughs> and then we're going to pay it forward. Yeah. She's moving to St. Louis too. So okay. she'll live with us while nice. she gets set up there. It's just that we have to sell the house to clear our books yep. so we can get a new home loan and stuff like that. We're not like so rich where we just buy multiple houses just at like- once, you know? Got houses all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. It's always weird when you go back to live with your parents as a, an adult. Yeah. I've done it. When I got out of the army, we went and stayed with my mom for a while. Yeah. Just like, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, so actually after, <laughs> um, I've lived with my parents a couple times in my adult life. And first off, like, dude, how fortunate am I right. to have that option? Yep. It's like, you know, when I think about my twenties, you know, when I was, when I was when I was, was broke and I overdrafted my checking account, 250 bucks, my mom was always there to bail me out and they didn't have any fucking money either. Right. But they would like bail me out. I always had a place to stay and I always had 
bailout money. Yep. And sometimes legit bail money. Legit <laughs> yeah. bail money. Actual bail. <laughs> actual bail. And lawyer costs and stuff like that. I was doing some shit for a while. Um, but uh, as uh, after I got shot, when I got shot, I stayed six months at Walter Reed. Right. And then um, I had to do I had to do a bunch of surgeries, you know, but we just had to like take a break and let my body heal. Yep. So the plan was to give me six months, let my body heal before we did more surgeries. Right. Um, and so they sent me home to Minnesota, but my life wasn't in Minnesota. It was really weird because like my life was in Fort Bragg, right. North Carolina. Right. Um, but they sent me to Minnesota and um, I lived with my parents, but I was, here's a fucking weird thing, dude. It's like. I don't know if you would call it PTSD or something like that, but majority of my stay there, I lived in a tent in my parents' yard. <laughs> in the in backyard. St- instead of living in the house, I lived in a tent. That's and like I, from a movie. Dude, I, but yeah, and it wasn't, um, I forget about that sometimes. I'm like, that's the <laughs> that's the real deal, fucked up, not transitioning back type right. shit, you know? Not- I, bought, I bought myself a fucking cot, right. I had a lantern, and so like my tent, it was just like, there was just books all over the floor and I just, you know, I, I was really, but I, but on the other hand, I did it because I liked the fresh air. Right. I wanted to be outside. I didn't want to be inside a house. How long you, had you been in the hospital up to that point? Uh, six months. Okay. So six you, months between, between being inpatient at Walter Reed yep. and I did a little bit of time at the Malone house there. Yep. When I, yeah, they, <laughs> I was, I was at Walter Reed during the barracks scandal. And so they didn't. Oh, so I stayed in like, like the family apart? hotel. Yeah, yeah. So it was like the whole. I remember that it was the barracks scandal thing. The like, fucking ceilings were falling. Yeah, down and there and was shit. mold and shit like yeah. that. So we, I, I had a room in the uh, Malone house, which is the apartment or the the hotel. Okay, where the family typically stayed, right. but they gave us rooms there and stuff. So. Yeah, but then I went back to my. I lived with my parents, but I stayed in a tent. I can see that. I. I mean. It's a little odd, but yeah. I mean, but having been in a hospital for six months, yeah. you're like, hey, the last fucking thing I want to be is in a room. Yeah, but it, but it was, but it was, it was like I don't want to. It's like a comforts of home thing, or or it's just like I'm not, I'm my own man now. I don't fucking, I'll make my own way, you know, type <laughs> shit. Fucking weird, just all that weird shit. Yeah, that's the weird shit, you know. That's that weird shit. And then actually, um, I lived with them again after I got my leg cut off. Okay, but it was like, but it kind of worked. I got my leg cut off in December. And my apartment lease was up that same month. Right. And I knew I was just going to be laid on my fucking ass for a while. And yep. I needed some uh, extra help. Yep. So I just moved to my parents and lived there for, I think, four months. Not in a tent this time. Not in a tent. Stayed, stayed in, in the, the house. house. Stayed in the house. It was, it was, it was quite a few years later. Right. I did, I did a little bit of con- uh, <laughs> transitioning. You know? Reintegrated yeah. <laughs> a little bit better after yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't imagine like the 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 thoughts your mom would have been having happy to have you back but then also concerned that you're in a tent in the backyard yeah i don't know yeah and actually so actually it did it one time while, <laughs> while i was while i was out there one time one night somebody broke into um it was either my car or my dad's car okay and so the next night i it, dude this weird shit like coming home i stayed up all night pulling security <laughs> <laughs> with a fucking pistol and a mac 10 they might come back <laughs> you know? at a mac 10 yeah, <laughs> oh that's gangster yeah dude i just <laughs> st- i stood out there pulling security and for a while i wasn't even in my tent i was in a different spot fucking mac 10 weird shit dude like weird weird stuff coming home yeah, that's know? like 1989 and it's not fa- i wasn't faking it or trying to be cool like looking back i was like off. Oh, I should have had some more reintegration training, a little bit, or any at all. At least a PowerPoint they just presentation. Sent me, you know, I literally like get shot in war, go through all the surgeries, <laughs> send you back to your hometown. Like everything, you haven't changed yet. You know, you haven't changed yet, and you're. St- I was still like gung ho. I, 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 they, they weren't talking about medical board at this point yet. Yeah. You know? So I was still super motivated. Um, and it was just yeah. So dude, I was like living in a tent, but I wasn't sleeping much anyways either. You know. Yeah. No. Nah. It'd be, it was weird. I would spend uh, most of my day at Caribou Coffee uh-huh. and just read all yeah. day. And, and um, like legit, that's what I did when I was in this six month period. Like all I did was read. And then when they closed at 10, I would walk over to Perkins and I would stay, I would, I would go there and I'd read until like three, four in the morning or something like that. And then go back and go to sleep in my tent. It's kind of my life for a little while. Like that's weird shit. A little bit, you know. Maybe maybe write about that. You know, right? Little the little things. The yeah. chapter in the in the middle. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, before I forget, 
I'll hit him with. A, I got. I got a slapper. Oh yeah. And this actually. This is a good story. It's a good story. I, so after um, we're getting into the savage slapper of the week here. Um, when I finish my workouts at LVAC. Yep. It's I usually finish around nine in the morning. Okay. And it's a nice time of the morning. The skies right. here are blue. The sun is out, but it's not too hot yet. Yep. And so I always open my trunk, sit in my trunk, and drink my protein shake. I dilly dally probably like for five to ten minutes. I have video of this. I know this is true. Yeah. And but it's like part of my it's part of my workout, like the cool down process. And right. I do this weird or like the parking lot. It hangout. mellows. Yeah, it mellows me out. You know. And so I was uh I was doing I was I was in my trunk, <laughs> you know. Hanging out in the trunk I was, of my I was, car. I was in my trunk. And well, like the the, the, the the funniest thing about this is I do it basically naked. Right. I take my pants off, take yep. my shirt off. You're I'm just, in I'm Ranger just panties. Out there and, in silkies, yep. getting some fresh air and vitamin D. And people look at me like that's weird. Like, how is that is that is natural? You know, it it's it's just a not weird thing. It's not a, I'm not trying to show off my body. I did it while I was fat too. Uh, but anyway, so I'm out there, I'm 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 in my trunk. And uh, some fucking Hummer <laughs> rolls by, and it's yellow, oh, yeah. and it's got stickers and yeah. chrome rim, and it's just bumping some music. <laughs> and I was like, "Who's this fucking Yahoo?" But then I he like parked right by me, right. and I was like, "That song's pretty fucking good." That's it. And it was in a different language. Here we go again, different language music, you know. So the dude gets out of his car, and I was like, "I'm going for it." Do it. I was like, "Hey, who was that?" You know, I was like, "Who was it? who who?" And I walked over there, and I was like, "Hey, man, who who was that music you were listening to?" And he had a, he's a guy, like, I didn't know what nationality was he was. He had a brownish hue to him. Um, and he just, he was like, what? You know, he's kind of, he was like, what? And I was like, what, what music was that? I was like, what, what language was that? And he, he goes like, it's Persian. Ooh. I was like, oh shit, Persian. Okay. So this motherfucker did not speak much English. Cause I, cause <laughs> the next thing I said, I was like, I was like, man, that sounded really good. I was like, can I, can you tell me who that is so I can pull it up on my Spotify? Right. I was like, I like to listen to a lot of weird shit. I listen to like like German rap and Russian rap. And he was like, you want Russian? I was like, no, I want that song. Not the one you just told and me so about. And so he like pulls out his phone. And he starts typing Russian. I'm like, stop. I don't want, I don't need <laughs> Russian music. I just told you I listen to Russian music sometimes. I want that song. What was that song? Persian. He's like, I know. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. I was like, no. Who is it? And we finally get through it, and it's uh, and it's an artist, um, Amir Tatalu. Okay, Amir Tatalu, and the sh- the song is called Shaba Tire, but it's it's it looks like Shabe Tire, S H A B E space T I R E. What do they speak over there? Is it Dari? I think what the language. In- no, so he like so so here's the thing. I came home and I told Stacy, I was like, check out this. So hold on, let me see. <laughs> So now, so that's Persian. You showed it. You let you you played that for me before we started, but now it's even better because I'm picturing it coming out of a bright yellow yeah, Hummer. Yeah, and the dude, and he was so so. Here's it. I get home and I told Stacy, I was like, man, I found this new song. It's fucking fire. Um, it's Persian. And she looks at me. She's like, Persian. She's like, that's Iranian, Derek. I didn't access the evil. But. Yeah, I was like, what? Hold wait. I didn't know. I I didn't know. I thought Persia was like India. No, because you know I, that's Indian. Yeah. So like that's what. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that that's Iranian shit. So yep. I had to look this motherfucker up, and I was like, "Is this guy like cool with the government, or what's his <laughs> what's his deal?" And I like the most I read about. So it's, it's Amir Tatalu, A M I R, and then space T A T A L O O. And I was there a translation of what the song's about? It's not like pro Ayatollah stuff. I fucking looked, dude. I tried to put it in translators, <laughs> and I was like, I was like Shabatire, and then it comes back. Shabatire. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> or like it uh it put one of the translations in Sanskrit. That's the that's the t- font or text they use, right? It's called Sanskrit. Uh, or I, don't I don't fuck I don't know, man. And I don't mean to be disre- disrespectful. I just don't know these things. But um but it's it's dude, I've I've listened to this song on repeat for like the last week. It's just fucking good. Mm-hmm. It's really good. And this guy, I guess, like he was like kind of pro government for a while. But then he started getting on the government's bad side, which is not hard to do over there, right? Yeah, and so so he was like, you know, speaking out against the government, and then they like arrested him because you He's know probably a good guy then. Yeah, they were they were like, oh, he's like, you know, 
Um, he's bad for the youth. He's teaching them to, you know, go against government, do crime and do drugs and things like that. So I think like he lives in Turkey now or something like that. He's been exiled. Or, yeah. Ex- possibly. Com- excommunicado. <laughs> ex- so yeah. And he's, he's got like face tattoos and pink hair and stuff, but he's an Iranian, uh, rap artist and the shit, the song is legit to be, to be fair. I've sampled some of his other songs i'm not into those okay quite yet it's just that one but this one is a fucking this heater is, man it's a gateway yeah it's i'm just, a gateway I'm just walking song. around the gym like sha 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 boutique <laughs> persian <laughs> it's persian <laughs> yeah. mm. oh i got a little uh validation recently what was it our gym shark battle oh yeah you got a little bit yes you did i gave you i gave you some validation yeah if you guys didn't listen uh, last week, um, Owen and I went at it a little bit here. I was actually thinking about this on the way over uh, because of that the post. So finish finish the validation. What was it? I was just telling him, I was just telling you that I fucking hate Jim Shark and I've hated Jim Shark from day one. And I think and I don't know if I explained this um, <laughs> well last week. The reason I don't like Jim Shark is because a vast majority of people I see wearing that line of clothing i don't see much effort coming out of those people okay i hate that right they're 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 they're, to, they're so fucking no it's just the wrong type of people okay and and, and that's okay then maybe they're, they're not there yet in their journey they're working on yeah it. maybe but but, but but currently they're cunts like but currently <laughs> they are but and and i just i don't i don't understand like man i i feel bad dude i i'll tell you something about me I've been a wild man in the gym since day one. It's fucking, if people think I'm like hyper and animated now, they should have seen me seven years ago. 17 year old fat Derek was a, was a a tyrant in the gym or or I said 10 years, right? Or did I say from day one? You said from day one. So maybe not, maybe not. Well, dude. Yeah. Or I've just always been extra. A little extra, you know, it's gotten me pretty far, but yeah. you know, it's like a little weird if you don't know me or know the story, you know, <laughs> but I was like, dude, I re- like looking like, I've just, you know, like I make noise. I just, I go full intensity. I've always right. gone full intensity and that's a, you know, actually, so today, like again, I looking at some of the, looking at some people in the gym and it's super common for, you know, like these younger females, no facial expression ever. Okay. And you know what that signals? No intensity ever. I don't like that. I don't know. I don't understand it. I right. don't like it. It's okay. like, fucking try. Put some Try. Effort. Try. Care. Let go. Or that's that's the thing. Like, I want them to let go. Yep. Let go. Nobody fucking cares. Do what, like, get after it. Stop being so fucking scared or stop being so concerned with dumb things and just let go get after it is like, you know, it's, um, it was actually, I used to be a bit concerned about, you know, like grunting and making noise in the gym and stuff like okay. that. But it was, it was CT Fletcher who told me to not care. Yeah. You've gotten who, who over taught that. me, taught me to not care. And I'm the loudest motherfucker in there, you know, but like, <laughs> and it's actually like people secretly know that about me and maybe I'll see someone for like a year and I'll never talk to them. And then like when I say hi, they'll talk about, you know, how it's been quiet because I've been gone for a few days. So like I, people know I'm the fucking crazy guy. It's, it'd be interesting to, to ask these people what they think about me. I'm like that guy. Yeah. I'm that, I'm the fucking loud one, the yeah. wild one, you know? Um, but, uh, it's liberating. I'm not trying to ruin anybody else's day and right. I don't. And if I am ruining somebody's day, that's more of a them thing <laughs> than a me thing. But anyway, so I just, yeah, I just, I, um. You don't like Jim Shark. I don't like Jim Shark, and I. So I come at it from the perspective of he, the guy who started the company, started it in his living room yeah. or started it in his and kitchen. So I'm not trying with to his be own a hater designs against right. that and stuff. You know, it's and just yeah. He scaled it up to yeah, if they're it, huge, they're huge, huge. It's impressive. So that like cool props, yep. legit. I'm not trying to be like a nasty hater. <clears throat> just what turns me off is the people I see in it and their lack of trying. Okay, I think that's ugly. Okay. And, and your clothes, your bright fucking teal pants don't make up for that. Right. <laughs> and then recently, I think they got into some fucking heat because they were making light of or like some like anti-cop type behavior. Yeah, I couldn't tell from the post, from the thing that you sent me, the, the, mm. 
the post, like what was the original post, but yeah, people kept know. responding back with, but I've been seeing it now cancel gym shark. So you really? know, what's super funny and I did, you know, like we don't talk politics on no. here or stuff like that, but you know, like, um, you got the cancel culture yep. on the left Yep. and this is just being general. You got the right. cancel culture on the left and the anti cancel culture on the right. But a couple things have happened recently where the right is like, cancel Netflix, cancel yep. Gymshark. Oh, yeah. like, that's interesting. The anti-cancel culture wants to cancel things. That's interesting. You can't do that. You can't have you can't have it both ways. No, you can't. Can't have it both ways. You ready for uh you ready for this fall? You ready for these uh oh for presidential elections geez. and shit to really hit the fan? It's gonna. Fuck. Yeah. I think it's gonna. It really is, yeah. But um we don't talk about that kind of stuff here. We just talk about Jim Shark. Oh man. Hey, you know what? We're going running after this, right? You're coming with yeah. me? Are you still running? Uh What's I have up? for the last two weeks, no. Did you fall I, off? I did because of the air. Well, well Because I of the mean, air. Do you have do you have like <clears throat> health conditions that you can't? I mean, there's only been like two or three days where they say limit. And the only thing they say limit your exposure. I mean, it's smoke, right? Like Billy's up breathing the shit. Yeah, what? no, and he'll but you have a gym die membership. young because of it. You have a gym membership somewhere, don't you? I no. I thought you were going to like EOS or something. No, like that. well, after COVID locked that shit down, I I was buying my million dollars worth of gym equipment. Yeah, so I've got my my super expensive plates that should yeah, have right. not been yeah, very right. expensive, and yeah, I've got a mismatched dumbbell set. I've got a twenty five and a thirty. I've been piecing together yeah. stuff. Have you been using that or no? Not the last couple no. weeks. Yeah, I just just I was, of, dude. Just, I was going hard. I know you were getting I was after going it, hard. And, I, and I'm just like, what happened? <clears throat> what happened, Owen? The because like the typical thing happened, like what? It's just like the it. move and. Uh, so I got my garage is filled with boxes right now because of the move. So we're yeah. packing. That has been. I think. I think there's been th- like three inconveniences that kind of all happened at the same time, mm-hmm. and so there has been this like feeling of I'm. It's on pause till I get to Texas. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still. I, I do walks every day with the kids, but now the kids want to come with me. So like I'm kind of going at their speed, which is a little frustrating. Declan's on a one wheel, so he one wheels. I hate, I, I hate, so I, like, I hate walking with Jack and Max because they yeah. they walk fast. But as soon as you hold their hand, yep, slow mo. Yes, slow mo. Yeah, yep. but dude, I um, you know what, what you're doing is a dangerous game. It is, I know, because because these this two weeks is going to turn into two years real fast. Yeah, and that's the typical thing, and that's happened to you before, and that's totally what has. happens. I think to ninety percent. I mean, just uh, it's it's the I agree when when shit isn't. You know, when, and and that's something that's something that separated me from the ninety percent. Yeah, over the because like even when I like, dude, when I was at my worst, I was still working out every day. That yep. was like the one thing. That's like the you know, tr- working out every once a day. That's just it's it's as it's just like breathing. Yep, it's just like drinking water. Yep, it's not it's a non negotiable. Right. You know, if I take a day off, it's because I'm training so hard. I need to let my body rest. And actually that's an active step towards my health and fitness, you know, but it's like, it's a non, it's always been non-negotiable for me. Then that's with myself. It's like, oh, like there's no, there's no, it just doesn't happen. Not, you know, going through a phase or like letting things, I legit got out of jail one morning and went. When to my out. personal training session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fucking legit took a taxi, showed up in my jeans and t-shirt. He's like, what the fuck? I was like, dude, I just got out of jail. Like literally. All right. Like just. I just, I was just, I've been in there for three days. Let's get after it. Yeah. He's like, maybe we'll stick to the machines. Cause you know, like I'm not feeling super hot, but right. you know, and then, you know, I like 2010, I talk about 2009, 2010, 2011 when I was struggling and I wasn't doing well. I'll, I'll, I'll admit, I think there was like a six month block in 2010 where I wasn't working out yeah. frequently. And here's what I, uh, what I was doing. I dropped out from college. I was just in my, I stayed in my apartment playing video games. I got addicted to video games uh, and like, I don't play video games yeah. because I can dude. everything I do. I do a hundred percent or nothing. And I, yeah. yeah. And actually, so Stacy and I, um, Stacy and I went shooting yesterday morning. 
Oh, fun. And I don't, yeah. So Stacy's, Stacy's like the husband here now. She's, she's buying, she just bought buying a gun guns. like three weeks ago. And then she was, just the other day, she's like, hey, I'm going to buy a fucking new pistol today. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. Hey, babe, so, I yeah. bought another gun. Yeah. So she's just like buying up all these guns right nice. now. Yeah. And she wants to go shooting. And, 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 um, we went with her work friends. Okay. Um, and, uh, they were really cool. They were really cool. And one of them is fucking well armed. Nice. So I went shooting yesterday, probably like the fifth time I've shot in the last five years. Yeah. I've and, it, and it's probably the first time I've gone, or I mean, in the last 10 years. That long? It's pro- yeah. Well, I got, you know, so I got out of the army in 2009. Okay. Got my conceal and carry and bought some pistols and stuff because you yep. have to do that in Minnesota. But, um, you know, in 2009, I lost my license for a year. Okay. You know, got a couple DUIs yep. and was getting in trouble. And so, like, I wasn't driving to the range, and I had no fucking money. Right. And I just sort of fell off. And also, so, like, I, I was the guy, when I got out, I was, like, carrying a gun, carrying a knife, first aid kit in my car, all all the time, you yeah. know? But over the years, you sort of come back into society. Like, right. That's weird behavior. And, but, it, I mean, it is, but people are like, you got to be ready fucking at all times. Like, well, <laughs> I mean, sure, be ready to defend you. But I'm not on alert. Right. You can't be, you can't be on being, being on alert at all times is a disorder. It's, it's, it's legit. It's a legit disorder. Yeah. You know, and you have to, so, but I, I just sort of, you know, so shooting for me now would just be a hobby. Fun stuff. It's not part do. of my job, yeah. you know, and not to be a cunt, but it's like, or no, the, the truth is, is like, if I'm going to shoot, I'm going to practice and right. be good at it, you know? So this is going somewhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, it's cool. I found, I found a really cool competition type thing um, that combines CrossFit and shooting. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. So, it was, uh, so I sh- uh, we went shooting yesterday morning um, with Stacy's coworkers and, and this dude she works with, his name's Oz. She's tall, good looking. And he's just got fucking guns galore. I was like, what the fuck? Dude? Can they do intel? I was like, what the fuck? And, and he told me like his past when like who he worked with and stuff. I was like, that's legit, man. And I told him straight up. And uh, um, oh, so here's, here's, a, here's a good lesson, I okay. think. And, I, and I've learned this in life. But then, you know, like this is something, this is something Jocko talks about. No, like, <laughs> but it is. Dude, so like people think I'm a good, like people, people expect me to be good at shooting. And they, they just sort of expect me to be proficient with guns and super 2A and things right. like that. Because I was uh, in the army and I'm a infantry veteran and I'm yep. aggressive and got tattoos and I just look the part, you know, the perishable really not, skill. Yeah. No. Yeah. For real. It's a perishable skill, but it's just a hobby, mm-hmm. you know, like we, we, we have our home defense guns. Like if you broke into my house, can I kill you? Yes. Okay. But like fast, am I proficient? No, Probably I'm not. fucking awful. And it's been so long and there's new <laughs> techniques and I, I and I'll do, I was like a little bit, I get a little bit anxious when I go shooting because I don't shoot and I suck. Right. And people are going to see you suck. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh, man. So you feel like Everybody's someone gonna, who's every- going back into the gym yeah, for the first and, time. But okay. Yeah. So I fucking, the you same. Know, so I walked up and I fucking shot and I was awful. And I turned around and I was like, well, I'm really bad at that, you know? And I just, <laughs> and I, and I, and I just told him straight out. I was like, this isn't something I do, you know? And, right. Um, and then actually, um, you know, I was shooting a little bit more. And this guy, Oz, he's really good. And they do competitions and things like that. And I was like, but he wasn't, he wasn't going to coach me or something like that. Right. But I, but I, you know, I took a few shots and I was like, Hey man, you got any pointers for me? You know, it's like, just like fucking saying that. Right. And he comes up, he's like, Hey, yeah. Like, you know, maybe like fix this hand position, you know, loosen up here, do a little bit of that. And I was like, all right, cool. And, you know, I started doing better, but it's like, and it's such an easy thing and it, yeah. and it, and it comes naturally to me or I, I don't care. I would rather ask help and look stupid and get better. Oh yeah. Than just look stupid and be, and then, and then be known as a stupid fucking asshole. Who's like that at, guy who's sucks good. and he's a cunt and you know, I would, and I would rather <clears throat> ask for tips and stuff like that. I you like know? tips. So, yeah. And, yeah. Especially but, when but you like, see who's like someone that, who's really good. Right. You know? Yeah. And so I had a lot of fun and, um, I was actually, I was like, man, like I, if Stacy wants to start shooting more now, I'd be like, all right, cool, I can, uh, you know, I'll buy a couple more guns and and do it for fun. And I think competition would be super fun. So, 
just fucking, it just so happened. <laughs> I was on the internet. And my buddy who's in the 82nd, or my friend who's in the 82nd Airborne Division was working out at a gym. Okay. And I looked and saw where the gym was. And then the gym posted something about one of their members who's competing in this competition called the Tactical Games. Okay. And so the Tactical Games is this shit that, that uh, um, crosses uh, functional fitness with shooting. Like, is it three gun shooting or well, so is it just... I don't know. They got, they got a pistol and a rifle and they're carrying different objects. Oh, yeah. For real. And like there's a, I watched one event where they're doing like an overhead walk and I was like, man, legit, like this would give me something. Oh. Cause dude, another thing about if, if I'm going to shoot I, or I, I need a reason to spend my time doing it. Like a reason I like competition. So I was thinking about maybe picking up a bow and arrow and getting into archery. Yeah. But I found this. Dude. And I was like, legit. And actually, so I was chatting I just, with them. I just pulled up the website. Yeah. This looks fucking rad. Yeah, dude. I'm saying. And so it, this would give me a reason to put time and effort into getting Because, like, here's here's another thing. Shooting is something I've wanted to do. Right. Just like running. Yep. But it's going to be a long process back to getting good. And yep. also shooting. I, dude, When I, in my defense, when I was in the Army expert marksman yeah and I, and I was just on you know proficient on all different yep. kinds of weapon systems yep but it mattered to me then it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if i know how to uh, disassemble and assemble a 240 in my life right right now, you know you can't get Actually, those uh, they're hard to come by yeah right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. unless you live in texas yeah no i got my eib you know i was good at that shit but um but you know like this would give me a reason and i was talking to him today and even better so my coach, okay, we've been wanting to do a competition for a long time, and he's together. Yeah, okay, like a team thing. Yeah, yeah. And he he's he he shoots, and right. He still works, you know. Um, and so they have a they have a team competition in August next year that's in West Virginia. So it's two dude teams. So this this is it's cool because I like yeah. I like fitness. I miss the com. It's one of those things where it's like, man, gets you back to like minded people. I don't, exactly. I'm not around, and like I had a good time shooting yesterday, but mostly because just hanging out and shooting the shit with this coworker of Stacy's named Oz. You know, it's just like around a dude who gets it, and you don't even have to talk about it. You're like me and this dude are on the same page. Yeah, and he's a cool guy. So they're on Instagram, uh, the Tactical Games. Yeah, mm-hmm. this shit looks fucking cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so they and she's. Uh, I was talking to a. Uh, a girl named Sarah from the tactical games. I DM'd him. Did you? Yeah. I, I DM the shit out of motherfuckers when I like them. Oh, I, yeah. All I said was like, um, you want to hear the message I sent him? Yeah, this is how Derek slides into DMS. <laughs> I said, cause it was, it was funny. I wrote him because it was funny how I found him. Okay. And it just on that day. Yep. And I, and I, so I says, LOL went shooting today. It's not something that really interests me a whole lot now. That it's not part of my job, but my wife has been buying guns and wanting to go. Was kind of searching for a reason to practice shooting a bit, and I happened to come across your page and competition. Very interesting. I think it's cool what you guys have put together. It looks great. That's all I said. I was like, yeah. fucking legit. Or I do that. I send people messages. I don't want anything from them. Right. You know, you know, they came back. And they're like, hey, we'll get you an entry and things like that. But I really just, when I see a person or a business doing something cool yeah i write them and i'm like i do too that's awesome yeah like what like that's fucking awesome it's nice to hear when you're doing something well i actually i don't like it when the next part of the conversation it is what it is man i have like an instagram of a a, a decent instagram following and people are quick to see that want to give me stuff or do stuff for me i'm like ah treat me treat that's like no no i was just saying awesome you know but anyways yeah so dude it looks cool yeah. The tactical games. Yep. And uh, so they invited, so, so they invited me to come to their uh, November competition in Florida. November? Um, or yeah. So it's November 13 to 15. And I said, and I, so, and I, and so I tell her, I said, good morning. Uh, problem is I'm absolutely God awful at shooting currently. I've shot like five times in the last decade, but I'd like to train and maybe November is a bit too close to be any good. Yeah. I don't want to just show up and be a fucking Yahoo. No, like, oh, wow. Look, this guy's here because he has followers on Instagram, but he fucking sucks. Right. It's like, no, my, my, the allure for me in doing these tactical games would be to train. I like to train yeah, for something too. and training shooting, you know? Yep. Yeah. But, um, I, I see these on their pictures where they're like, Shooting pistols, 
I don't see any advanced optics, and I'm not about that. <laughs> I, dude, I, I, are you good with a pistol? Yeah. Like, are you good, good? Without um, uh, without any kind of advanced optics? Yeah, I'm good out to normal ranges. Like, the guys, like, I saw Evan shoot. Oh, those guys are godly. I saw that guy shoot Matt and Evan. with his fucking pistol out yeah. at, like, 100 yards or yeah. something. It was crazy. Yeah. No, those I can't do are, that. Yeah, so I don't see... <clears throat> I don't see any optics on any of these pistols, so I got a lot of work to do there. I wonder if I can just use a twenty two. Yeah. Case my ten twenty two. Yeah. Oh man. I no, have that, I, looks, that looks fun and interesting, huh? This looks fun. This looks like something I might want to try and do. Yeah. But um yeah. So when's the next one after I guess I have the fucking so they, website out? She up. she said they have eleven competitions lined up for next year. I don't know if the calendar is out yet. Okay. But the team one is in August, and so maybe I'll try to get my my friend, my coach. It probably wouldn't take much convincing for him, and maybe I'll do one before that to go get some practice. Yeah, I mean that'll be tough for me because they like walk with a load. Yep, or like you know carrying sandbags. It yeah. is functional. It is man's world shit. Yeah, but like women do okay. Women like there's a lot of badass women out there. Yeah, and, and there's they're, women they're in fucking this. banging out this competition. I just yep. mean like it's that, it's that world. Right. It's it's the tough shit, you know? Getting dirty, shooting, running, lifting. Dude, this looks fun. Yeah. You they're know, they're like be funny going if you do the... like Fran. Doing right? Fran while you shoot. Right. Twenty one pull ups, twenty one thrusters, twenty one with, with a vest. Twenty one uh, you know, with twenty five meter fucking yeah. hit your steel. That'd be cool. Yeah. No, so that looks fun. That and looks like a lot of fun. Got me, I'm gonna look into that. It's got me pretty excited. I think they have a location in Texas. Hmm. I might have to train, bud. Me or Me. you? You're gonna do that? I think I might do oh, this. Oh shit, dude! Like, yeah, that'd be cool. You gotta get yourself a rifle. You gotta yep, get a rifle. I got one. I got one. Get a long gun. That's what they call it in the news. A long <laughs> gun. You get a long gun. Get a long gun. Get a long gun. It's fucking <laughs> good lord. It's a sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So, what's your last one? That's it. This is it. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. This kind of came I'll, out of nowhere. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, it, it did. Just Ross gave us a call one day and said, are you interested in doing a Saturday show? It's after SHOT Show, I think. And it was you who uh, said we could figure it out. Started that's in my kind, garage. That's kind of how we've done everything. Yeah. Is you've come across an opportunity to do something, and and you figure, and then out I figure out how to make it happen. The 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 tech, yep. the specs. Right. You know? What and that's, dude, that's what I am. I'm a... I'm a I'm an idea man and the Director. marketing side, yep. but I'm not the fucking you know operation the technical. How do we do it? Yeah, yeah, and and actually, so you know, you were just training up Stacy the other day to yeah to run the, the uh, to the store. Stuff. You're gonna be missed, man. You we you did a lot here the last year and a half. Like we started selling these training programs. Yep, it was you know people have been telling me. For to, years, to right? Sell training programs, and I just didn't know how to do it. And it was like, I don't like, I don't like technology, man. Right? And it, you know, um, I'm just trying to work out and train all the time. <laughs> um, so people are like, you need to sell training, but nobody said this is how you can do it. Yep. And that's all it took. That's like I respond to initiative. Yes. You know? And you came, you came with a solution, and I was yeah. like, oh, it's that easy, huh? Yeah, all right, yeah. That. Let's fire it up. I can totally do and that. And it's been a whole, it's been a total fucking game changer. Yeah, we redid been, the website. We did the we redid the website and then we yeah. came up with the format to actually deliver programs yeah to people and and um um I I so do um so actually um and we just put out so we we started with the the new year program which right we eventually renamed to so fit yep and we we just released Part phase four. four so now we have like on derekwhite.com there's a whole year of what I would call hybrid training yep. functional training strength and conditioning yeah. And uh, you can get a whole year of training for 80 bucks. And actually, you can get it 20% off with the code SATURDAY. That's right. This, dude, that's we always forget just to shout a, out. Le a legit deal. Like, yeah. you can't, that's not, you're not going to find that. You're not going to find this level of programming for no. that cheap anywhere else. In 12-week blocks, there's mm -hmm. four 12-week blocks of training that'll that'll cover you for the whole year. Yeah. So, and actually, so I, I, I announced on Facebook. I just put up a post on Facebook yesterday. I was like, hey, the program's out. Yep. And then, you know, I was on Instagram just a little bit later, and I someone tagged me in a post. I don't know who this person is. 
And it was funny because um, was this her review? Yeah. So uh, so uh, good. A, 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 a woman named Jennifer. I have no idea who this person is, but I saw this post. Saw Derek uh, finished Derek Whitus so fit 1.0. All my lifts had significant increase except for shoulder press. But to be fair, had done a shoulder intense wad 12 hours prior. Anyways, but um, so um, she posted her her numbers, her numbers, yeah, and like so, she gained strength. Just this is just phase one, right? She she gained a lot of strength, and I'll tell you the strength. But she also did it while she lost fourteen pounds. So like you're like, Fuck yeah. like and so this um, nice work, Jennifer. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, you know, dude, a. I see this all the time. Yeah, but it's just like people tag me in their stories, and yep. I don't share stories and stuff like that. But this was a post, so I. But I thought this was cool. So when she started week one, her back squat three rep max was two oh five. Okay. At the end, it was two thirty. Like nice. that's, that's 25 pound increase. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah. While, weeks, while losing fat, right. Gaining strength while losing fat bench press three rep max one Oh five. Okay. And that went up to one twenty. Okay. Um, her deadlift was three rep max two fifty five, And that went up to two eighty. And so do we just, I just, I see this all the time. People yep. like, you know, like a lot of dudes in a 12 week block, they're putting like 50 pounds onto their deadlift, right. you know, 20, 30 pounds on their bench press people like the, and it, I like this because I'm a little bit self-conscious on whether or not these programs are good right. or not. Right. And, but to see this, all I see the people who follow through the people who commit yep. and start and finish the whole thing. The, it works, man. Like they're fucking gaining strength. Yep. They're getting in their, their conditioning is better. These workouts are tough in week one. There's roughly a hundred burpees at least. Yeah. Uh, I, or, no, no. I mean, sorry, 200. Right. Cause because there's a, it, yeah, there's a wad with five rounds of 20 yeah. and then there's a wad. That's a 20 minute AMRAP, 10 Cal row, 10 burpees. And you should be able to do Stacy finish that. And she got 93 burpees. Okay. You know, and just like two, three days before she had done a hundred. But the point of that is <laughs> there's a point to that. There's a reason for that, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a well thought yeah. out program. Yeah. Not just a bunch of exercises right. slapped together. Right. But it, they're challenging because that's, that's the only, that's the only thing that works. If, if people you know, like people are going to buy a program to me because they want to make changes, they want to get better. Yep. Well, you know what it takes, it takes hard work to get better. Giving you, giving out a foofy program it's not going to work. People right. are going to see the change, you know? Um, but that's, so like, this is, that's cool with the numbers. Yeah. I remember there was, I remember there was one, I think when, after we had released part two, somebody had, had, it might've been a review talking about their, their gains, but they didn't have like the, the numbers of what the gains actually were. So that's interesting to see her actually post the numbers of like, here's how good I got, or here's how, here's how much I improved. It's funny we're talking about this because Stacy's on week two, day one now. Okay, and she was like, "Ugh," because so she's got some she's got some squats to do, um, some leg stuff. But then her wad today is, or her workout, the conditioning piece of today is five, twelve, nine, six, three, kettlebell swings, bar facing burpees, and push press. Just burpee, 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 yep. burpee. That's you know people. I that's that's one thing I see in these programs. People tag me like, "Fuck." Fuck you, Derek, and all these fucking burpees. But guess what? They're working. Yep. It's it's working. You're it's losing working. weight. Burpee, yeah. Gaining like, strength. Yep. Mental mental tenacity. Yep. That's the, like burpees are not physically challenging. If you're fucking like, you know, 100 pounds overweight, yeah, okay, yep. maybe a little bit physically demanding, but burpees They're a grind. are a mental challenge. They we're we're, we're trying to make you mentally tough. Because yep. you know who wants to do burpees? Fucking nobody. <laughs> fucking nobody. And people are, you know, and all these motherfuckers with two legs doing burpees are trying to tell me how bad they are. Right. I'm like, hey, you know, remove that right leg, motherfucker. Take it and off. And then get at me, you know? Like, I know. Trust me, I know. That's what I like about, like, you know... Me and my coach write these programs. Right. So people like send me their workout today. They're like, fuck you, Derek. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I know. That video. I'll tell you straight up, that fucking bitch does it to me too. Yep. Me, you know, like he's just like the same dude, the same dude who's torturing all these people oh, yeah. tortures me. Yep. You know, and it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. So. Mm. Well. I think that's it. That's going to be it. That's it, man. I said it's the end of the fucking, it's the end of the road, end of an era. Thirty three episodes, thirty three. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's it for Savage Saturdays for a while. 
Um, I'm sure you'll be back on as a guest at some point. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I think and I'll so. probably come down to Austin and visit, yep. and we can all fucking shoot the shit there. Yeah. But um, but uh, this is the last Savage Saturday for maybe three, four months until three, I go months. get settled. And when me and the family are settled up in Missouri, we're gonna pick it back up. And actually, I'm gonna be doing these shows from First Form HQ. I right got like fucking rooms. Yeah, podcast Built rooms. For, you can't beat like, that. I dude. know it's gonna be so. I'm so fucking excited. Yep. And and we would um. It's an incredible. Opportunity we would already to be there. Yeah. Access to all that. We would have. We would have. We would already live there right now. But my sister is um you know doing going through chemo here. Yep. So we're sticking around and not not splitting in the family apart. Um, right now, and uh, I'm you know itching to go. Yep. And 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 you know getting getting a yard for the kids. Yep. You know seasons. I know grass. Dude, Rain. like kids are just in jail here Dude. during the summer. Yeah. Yep. Rain, snow, fresh air, not all this fucking smoke from because Billy's not doing his goddamn job in California. He's just, he's just taking out there. pictures on Instagram. Yeah, he's just taking dick pics and posting them to Instagram. <laughs> thanks, Billy. Yeah, thanks, Billy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot it's of fun. It's been fun. This, this isn't been great. Uh, goodbye forever, but it's it's goodbye for a while. And uh, um, that's going to do it for a while. Um, while we're off. Don't slack off. Owen. Nope. Don't slack off. I'll be running. Stay, stay on top of your shit. Stay on top of your shit. Stay motivated. I got to now because I have this competition I'm about to train for. Let's do it, man. We're, yeah. we're like, we're going to look so cool. I know. You, but you got to, you got to, you got to have a, you got to have a good physique. I'm in, man. Cool. No, I All think, right, cool. I think this might be what cool. I need to Legit. like. Yeah. Cool. We'll the meet up at games. one of them and we'll, we'll compete. Um, all right, well then. I mean, you're not. I mean, all right, well I'm gonna fucking beat you, but uh, that's gonna be a bad day. But you better train hard. No, I'm just, yeah. I'm like, if, dude, like we've talked about what the relationship. If you're trying to be yeah. my competition, right? I know right, how it works. I'll get, it'll be like 50 people, and people are like, "What's your goal?" I was like, "Whoop Owen's ass, <laughs> fuck that motherfucker," you know. Well, I need yeah, to that destroy dude, that him. Said, and like, why do you want to beat him so bad? I was like, well, he said he's gonna compete against me. I'm like that's it. Like yeah, that's all it takes. That's all it it's took. Fucking on. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Well, I'm gonna go. Uh, um, we're gonna go to the yep. track. I'm gonna do some running. Let's do it. Um, hey, I'm gonna miss you guys while I'm gone. We've this has been a lot of fun. It has been. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Um, you know, um, I appreciate those of you who have you know said that you enjoy the show or yeah. or you know like uh, appreciated something we said or yep. did somewhere the, along the lines. All the messages, all the emails yeah, that we've like got, the interviews have been we amazing. got to do with people, and yeah. just like hear a couple stories. That's that was a lot of fun, like Brandon and Sean and Ryan and yeah. Chad, my ma, you know, Stacy was was a good um, she's awesome addition to the show. I'd she love was having great. Her on. Yeah, she was she made yeah. She, <laughs> I think everybody's favorite episodes are the ones with Stacy on, <laughs> you know. And uh, I don't blame them. Yeah, no, it was, it was a lot of fun to do, um, but we're just gonna take a little break. That's it. And uh, I'll be back in a few months. So uh, until then. We're around. Mama, we're on the internet. We're on the internet. We're on the internet. Um, at O'Lowerman, if you want to check out um, his, 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 his cool project, he's trying to get off the ground. I knew your dad. I knew your dad. I knew your dad. And you're selling some shirts on Etsy or selling some art Painting. on Etsy yeah. to try to fund that project. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just yeah, check out Owen on Instagram. And anyways, this is a long, drawn out goodbye, but I'm going to miss you. It is. I'm going to miss you, but I'll see you on the internet. I love you guys. Happy Saturday. Cheers. <laughs>